All right, we're going to go ahead and practice our review for Chapter 4. How do we tend to um, functions? So let's start off by graphing. Now, throughout this whole review, um, consider pausing, solving, and playing, and see how you did on each of the problems. So I'll start reading the problem. Why don't you go ahead and, and pause it and work it out yourself? So we're going to sketch a graph here. So the height of a person from child to adult. So on that particular graph, as that happens, um, we don't start at the origin because a person isn't born with like no height. They do have some height and they usually grow really fast and then they kind of mellow out a little bit, um, level off a little bit. And then and then they just they stop growing. Um, and then some would even say maybe the line should go down a little bit um, to represent us shrinking as we got older. I don't know. I think it has something to do with like, you know, joints compressing or something like that. Um, the speed of a car traveling through the mountains. Okay, so I could in this situation start at zero zero for speed, and then I speed up to catch up to what the speed is doing, and then I could level off as my speed is moving along, and then I hit a mountain which slows me down a little bit. But notice I'm still moving along, and as I'm traveling up the mountain. Um, then I'm going down the mountain, so it allows me to speed up a little bit, and then I might maintain that speed, and then hit another mountain, which is going to slow me down and maintain that speed. So notice my graph does continue to move along as time continues to move on. And both of these, um, time is happening and time is happening. I guess my um, independent variable, my dependent variable is telling me, okay, what's happening in that particular time? Determine whether it is a function or not. Um, we're going to first look here. Um, what determines a function? It is not a function if x has more than one y value. Okay? It is not a function if x has more than one y value. Let's take a look here. So, 12 goes to 3, 2 goes to 5, negative 4 goes to 1, 5 goes to 5. So every x value, um, there's, every x value has um, one y value. The next one. So this indeed is a function. Let's look at this guy right here. So 1 goes to 3, 1 goes, 2 goes to 5, 3 goes to negative 1, and 1 goes to 7. Now in this case, x um, it, when x is 1, y has two values, y equaled 3 and y also equaled 7. And that cannot be true because of the statement. Um, it is not a function if x has more than one y value. So x in this case has two values, so it is not a function. Let's keep looking. Determine whether it is a function or not. In these particular ones, when you look at a graph, you can do um, it is if it passes the vertical line test. So I'm going to try the vertical line test, and it only hits one point throughout the entire graph. So um, this is a function. Next graph here, if I do a vertical line test, um, it shows me that there are two solutions. Like, the, for instance, on this one, remember we ran into the problem with the x's? So in this case, when x is 2, y is, looks like right here, like 3, but y is also negative 3. In this case, it would make it not a function for both this reason and this reason. Um, the vertical line test and that x has 2 solution. Okay. Let's go ahead and talk about range and domain. The range is our going to be our y, and our domain is going to be our x. Um, so basically, when we're asking find the range, we're basically asking to solve for y. In terms of x. That's really what we're saying. So when I go through each one, I'm going to just use my substitution. So I'm going to do negative 3 times negative 8 plus 2. And when I solve that out, I end up with y equals 26. My next one, I'm going to look my next um, domain is going to be 0 plus 2. And I find that y equals 2. And my last one, 
multiply times. So I've done negative 8. I've done 0. I'm going to try 8 plus 2. I end up with y equals 20, uh, negative 22. And I would say my solution for this one would be as my um, domain is negative 808, I would say that my range is 26 to negative 22. And I do those funky bracket bar things. Let's run the next one. Negative 3 fourths times, I'm going to run the same numbers, minus 1. I end up with y equals 5. I'm going to negative 3 fourths times 0 minus 1. y equals negative 1. I do the last one, negative 3 fourths times 8 minus 1. I end up with y equals negative 7. So in this particular situation, I end up with 5, negative 1, and negative 7 um, as my range. Writing a rule from a table. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm going to look at a couple places. I'm going to look at the rate that it's changing each time. It is nice and consistent, so it tells me it's linear, that I can indeed write an equation. It's moving one each time, so that's going to tell me x. And I'm going to come back and look and see what's going on at 0 at the origin, uh, 0, 4. So that tells me it's starting at 4. I come back to this one. Um, my relationships between these aren't um, nothing consistent. I can't tell, but I can see that there's a relationship happening this way. And it looks like it is a squaring relationship. So y equals x squared. Let's take a look at these relationships. Um, interval changing between them is 1. So that tells me it's y equals x. It's going up, so it'll be positive. I'm going to go back and figure out what's going on at my origin. It's at negative 2, so that is my starting point. So I'm going to plug that in as minus 2. I can see that as my x goes by 1, each of these goes by 2, telling my rate of change, um, which is going to be 2x. I'm going to see what's going on at that intercept here by 2, so that means it goes to the origin. So I am done. Do one more practice. I'm writing a rule from a table here. Four or five. It's increasing by one each time as these increase by one. So y equals x. What's going on at my origin? It's going to be zero. And it goes by one again, so it's going to be at two. So plus two will be my equation from this table. Let's try to apply this. Cost of renting a car depends on the number of mile and number of mile. It costs $150 to start, and then it's an additional $150 per mile after that. So maybe we get a little number of miles. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and build an equation from this situation here. We know that my cost is going to be that $150 just to, to start, and, and it's an additional $150 per mile. And now we can apply that equation at number two, that if it is 25 miles. So my cost is 150 plus 1.5 times 25. My cost will be 187.50 once I calculate that. You can also try my cost. It's 150 plus the dollar fifty cents times the 40 miles. And I end up with my cost being $210. My last one is kind of asking me to look at it backwards a little bit. I know um, it's going to be $240. And it's going to get my $150 and $1.5 per mile. And I'm trying to figure out um, $240 will get me how many miles. So I go ahead and subtract my $150. And then put 90 equals 1.5 miles, divide by 1.5, and I find out that I can go 60 miles on that. So $240 will get me 60 miles. So the question says, 
if you have $240, can you afford to drive the car 65 miles? I can only go 60 miles, so the answer is a big mo. Mo. Huh. Mo. The answer is mo, which rhymes with no. That's funny. Speaking of mo, which looks like moo, I'm going to go and ride a cow in the hallways and see if anybody notices. <laughs>